This is one of the very important topics where we would understand the history of psychology. So we would focus on the various thoughts which starts from the Western Greek thought, the medieval and the modern period and then some new concepts like transpersonal uh, psychology, cognitive psychology, what is multiculturalism, difference between natural and human science, logical empiricism, knowledge paradigms and ontology, epistemology and methodology, finally the nature of justification. To begin with, the very first thing, the western philosophy, the roots of western philosophy and how psychology evolved from philosophy. So beginning of psychology is with the word psyche plus logos. Logos means to study, psyche means soul. So it initially started as a study of soul and that was where philosophy and psychology were one and slowly psychology separated out from the main branch of philosophy into a separate subject and a separate nation. To begin with there were various thinkers. The first two important Greek thinkers which we point out here are Plato and Aristotle. Aristotle was the disciple of Plato. Now uh, Plato basically focused on two distinct forces which were body and mind. So the idea of Plato was focusing on the concept of mind and body and that mind <coughs> exists even after death but body does not exist after death. So that was the clear differentiation that Plato gave. Aristotle was the disciple of Plato, followed his views very strongly. However, he was very, very pessimistic about uh, the role of uh, nature that the, sorry, the role of education that the education could improve the human nature. So Aristotle was highly pessimistic, was negative about the fact that education could improve the basic nature of human beings. Now, next came René Descartes. René Descartes was a French mathematician and philosopher. He, he gave the concept of coordinate geometry and focused exclusively on the concept of dualism, the mind-body dualism. So uh, René Descartes focused on the mind-body dualism and he focused that there is an uninterrupted transaction that occurs between mind and body. The next important scholar that we would discuss is John Locke. John Locke's philosophy is tabula rasa. Tabula rasa means our mind is like a clean slate. That means anything that comes across puts an impression onto the brain. And that's what is called as tabula rasa. Now, what was the idea of John Locke? John Locke said that the knowledge relies on experience through the sense organs and that was the concept of John Locke. So John Locke was a British nationalist during the 18th century talked about that knowledge depends on the sense organs and through our sense organs we communicate with the outside world. Whatever we communicate with the outside world puts us an imprint onto our brain. And this makes it a clean slate. Because our mind is a clean slate, everything that comes through the sense organs puts an imprint onto the brain. The next was Weber. Weber's laws are known as laws of Weber and this laws of Weber's are important because they are the basis for psychophysics that we have covered uh, separately. They help in understanding the sensation and the stimuli and his approach was highly scientific in nature. Then was Fechner. Fechner's views was again important. He gave the term psychophysics and was the father of quantitative psychology. So he laid down the foundations for quantitative psychology. Then came into existence Darwin. Darwin was known for his work of origin of his species, the way through which the uh, human beings have been influenced about various concepts. William Wundt who laid down the first psychological laboratory and there is where he said that the goal is to show that for each mental activity there is a physical activity that is related. So he said that all our thoughts, minds, attitudes are governed by the uh, mental act. So for each mental activity there is a physical activity which is involved. So there is a physical activity which is involved with each mental activity. The next is Pavlov. Pavlov in 20th century 
focused on the concept of conditioning so learning through conditioning was the key idea that pavlov focused on and his experiment the famous experiment was dog and bell experiment that we have already covered in our class on learning uh, so as we proceed with uh, the concepts of learning you would understand that better but the just basic idea is when the food is shown the dog salivates which is an unconditioned stimuli producing an unconditioned response now this food i pair with a bell even if i don't bring food i then later on if i just ring the bell the dog would salivate and that's a conditioned response to a conditioned stimuli and that's how the concept of conditioning was explained and he explained that this brings in a fundamental change in the basic uh, concept 